Hey guys, Dr. Yusuf here, and welcome to this week's episode review of Into the Dalek. Now, Into the Dalek. First Dalek storage with Peter Capaldi, the 12th Doctor, and the first Dalek, sorry, the first Dalek story, Dalek story, Dalek story, for Series 8. Now, just like Matt Smith, Matt Smith had his first Dalek story early on in Series 5, Peter Capaldi's gone straight in with a Dalek story. Yeah, he has. Matt Smith almost went straight in, but pretty much straight in. And it was definitely the best Dalek story in ages, in my opinion. But I didn't think it was as good an episode as Deep Breath was last week. So I'm going to do the review like I did last week. And as I said, I'm going to be doing this for every episode of Series 8, hopefully every Sunday. So let's get going. The first thing I want to say is I saw loads of like similarities, similarities... Just saying, just Star Wars in this episode. I used to think that the end of time reminded me a lot of Star Wars. And this, well, pff, big ship chasing small ship, firing lasers, and they were going for an asteroid field. Also, at one point, the ship was hiding on an asteroid, which reminded me of the Millennium Falcon in uh, Empire Strikes Back. And uh, when it goes in the asteroid, and when it clings onto the back of the Star Destroyer. Pure coincidence? Maybe. Capaldi was being very dark. And sarcastic, like when he rescues um, Journey Bloom, he says, uh, when she says, Take me back, he's like, uh, No, hey, not like that. And then he makes it like, Be polite as she talks and gets her to say, Please. And, I, and he shouts when he says, Get it right. So it's sort of, I can see a bit of Malcolm Tucker coming through, and in ways, a bit of a teacher. He's definitely different. He's a very interesting doctor so far. Also, one thing that really bothered me was he didn't even flinch when the people on the Aristotle said they had Daleks around. Like, he didn't even... He just was, like, chilled about it. They kept saying Daleks don't take prisoners and stuff. Um, and he just was cool about it. And uh, also, we saw the introduction of Danny Pink. Now, I quite like him already, to be honest. Like... We've hardly, well, we've seen quite a bit of him, but he's all very mysterious at the moment. But so far, I do like him, and I'm looking forward to see how he progresses into a full-time companion. Uh, obviously, we have pl they're playing on who did he kill. Now, we know he was a soldier. Kids are asking him if he's ever killed anyone, and then he even went to the point of crying when he, someone asked, did he kill someone that wasn't a soldier? So, did he kill, like, an unarmed person or something? So, uh... They're going to play on that, I think, and we'll find out sooner or later. And uh, I bet that person he killed has some significance to the series. Also, how did Clara get back from Glasgow? I also like how it, like, uh, left off straight there in Glasgow. Well, the Doctor getting coffee. It was quite a cool, like, little crossover, handover to the next episode. And uh, another thing I thought was interesting, it's a bit like when the Doctor said in Deep Breath, uh, why is everyone talking English? And then... When uh, Vastra, with her Scottish accent, started talking, he said someone talking properly. He says to Clara that she uh, isn't a young woman anymore. And it's as if his whole perspective has changed. Uh, like, completely. Just because he's old, he now sees other things as old. So, maybe that's something I thought was worth mentioning. Also, when he's like going down the stairs, he's like, Clara, Clara, Clara. And I saw bits of William Hartnell there when he was saying Clara Clara. And then when he slows down, says Clara Clara. I saw a lot of Tom Baker in him. Like, definitely those two doctors were shining through. William Hartnell and Tom Baker. How do you know who I am? Now, when he said that to the Dalek, it's obviously because he has a new face. And the Dalek can't just see him and be like, oh, look, a doc the Doctor. So, uh, um, but also, it brought me back to how in the side of the Daleks, the Daleks forgot who he was, and I thought they would have had a brilliant opportunity to play with that, but no, they just casually tossed it away in a, um, Time of the Doctor, yeah, that suddenly they all know who he is again, so uh, that was a shame, I know it didn't really come into play in this episode, it just reminded me, and I thought about pointing it out, that it's a shame that they didn't explore that, of course the Daleks have to know who the Doctor is, but they could have played with it for a year or so, and no, they didn't even use it, they just got rid of it. Also, they climb in through the Dalek's eye. Now, is this because of the technology they were using? Or is a Dalek's eye actually soft? 
I don't know. You tell me. I also liked on the detailing inside the Dalek, when they got inside the Dalek. So obviously they go through the eye, they go down the ice doors and you see all the electrical impulses for sight and all that. And the detailing inside, we have like Dalek hemispheres that are on the skirt of the Dalek inside. And it just looked really Dalek in there, it was really quite cool to see inside the Dalek. I like the attention to the detail. Also, aside the Doctor, it was really weird, he let Ross die. Now as he says, Ross was going to die anyway, but it was very weird for the Doctor to just let him die. A very dark doctor again because we've been exploring how Capaldi is very dark and he's very alien and just letting Ross die was like what next we had Dalek antibodies uh, well sorry that should have been before but yes the Dalek antibodies that was a clever idea and they killed Ross but they were cool Dalek antibodies now when they go down the chute into like the organic protein waste just deposit it was a lot like Matt Smith's second episode, The Beast Below, where him and Amy go down the chute into the guns again. So that was, like, second ep both the Doctor's second episode do the basically the same thing. I guess it was kind of cool, but weird and coincidental. He is heartless now. Like, saying how Ross was on the top layer of the goo. Like, he is heartless, and he's alien. Like, we were told, he's very alien, this Doctor. And I'm loving it, like... Matt Smith would never have done that, and David Tennant would just stand there saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But no, the, this Doctor was remarking about how he's like, goo. He's more, this Doctor is more into, like, solving the problem and being right than saving everyone. Like, he'll let people die just so he can get to the bottom of what's going on. And finally, for the first time in four years, the Daleks actually shot someone. This whole episode was very Dalek and it reminded me a lot of series 1 episode 6 I think Dalek the first appearance of the Daleks in the new series and it was very creepy they were very like hell bent on exterminating and it was just a good all round Dalek episode and then Clara slapped the Doctor which was amusing mildly but also how it shows she is still not convinced about what the Doctor has become and She's really not liking him in some ways, like she's concerned about him. And yeah, she's confused. And then we saw Missy again. Now Missy was there when uh, Gretchen died and like, as soon as like she popped into this world, I knew it would be Missy and obviously it's gonna be a bit like the crack in series five. Every few episodes we're gonna see her just popping up. So uh She's going to be very important. As we know, she's in the finale, so Missy again. If you want like my thoughts on Missy, go watch my Deep Breath review because I explain it all there, what I think about Missy. Another thing I found interesting was the Doctor says he went to Scarrow and he worked out who he was. He was not the Daleks. Now, yeah, I'm not the Daleks and Clara's not the Daleks, but maybe that had some sort of significance. Who knows? I also liked and was amused by how everyone fires at the Daleks doesn't do any damage, then a Dalek gun destroys a Dalek instantly. <laughs> it's amazing. Also, how did they get out of the Dalek and become big again? I know they said there's a button on the wrist that would like end the mission, but does that, no matter where they are, just suddenly teleport them back to where they the outside and then make them grow again? Bit, bit loose ends there, but nothing to really cry about. And then we had the bombshell when the Dalek tells the Doctor he is a good Dalek. Any significance again there, or was it just like reasoning with the doctor? Like, you're because he's confused, is he a good man at the moment, or is it just it's playing on his dark side? And it's also his, uh, like he has all the elements to be a Dalek and he hates them. So now, what is the doctor becoming, or has it got something to do with the doctor not being the Daleks? Maybe the Doctor's a Dalek, or something along the I know it sounds crazy, but maybe we're going to learn something about the Doctor. It's ha that has, he has, sorry, that's so like, <laughs> he has, he has, what? Um, he has some sort of connection to the Daleks that we don't know about, possibly. But I wouldn't like to talk about that now, because it's a very long shot. Also, the Doctor obviously says to Blue that he wishes she hadn't been a soldier, otherwise he probably would have taken her with him. Obviously, we know that's awkward because 
Clara is going to want Danny Pink to come along, and he was a soldier. And then Clara reassures the Doctor by saying, you try to be a good man, and that's probably the point. So, she's still not sure, but he's obviously trying to be a good man, and that's what's important. And finally, Clara reassures, like, brings back our fears. She says she doesn't have a problem with soldiers, like, not me, that's what she says. But uh, she knows that the Doctor does, and this might be tricky. And that is it. That is all I picked up from that episode. Not as crazy, like, in depth as I went with uh, with Deep Breath, but it was a very. I enjoyed the episode, and it was the best Dalek stories story in ages. But for me, we haven't had a good Dalek story since Journey's End, and we still haven't had a decent, proper Dalek story. Episode was disappointing for me. It was nowhere near as good as last week's. Uh, but then there are these people who always think, oh, that Doctor Who episode was rubbish, the writing was awful. I don't care. I just try and enjoy every Doctor Who episode. I have my favourites, I have the ones I don't like so much. But for me, they're all crucial to the like 800 story episode long, whatever it is, story of Doctor Who. So I'm not one to say, oh, Moffat's writing, that was awful. The CGI was awful. Ugh. No, I don't care how bad it was. I find them all important. But Obviously, I have my favourites, and that definitely wasn't one of them. Um, I would rate it maybe a 7 out of 10, whereas I would give Deep Breath a 9 out of 10 for comparison. So, overall, I'm loving Capaldi, I'm loving Series 8. Can't wait for next week with Robin Hood and in the Robo Sherwood. So, uh, we will have to wait and see what happens then. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, yeah, thank you very much, and I will see you again next Sunday. Last video of the summer this will be because I'm going back to sick form tomorrow? No, tonight? But I bought so I'm staying overnight tonight and you know, start actual lessons tomorrow. So I'm back to sick form at the weekend as always so uh, yeah I will see you next weekend when I do my review of episode 3 of series 8, Robot of Sherwood. Thanks for watching guys, see you next Sunday. Bye!